This is AEDT 1170U, Psychological Foundations and Digital Technology, Module 2, Video Clip 2.3, Psychological Development of Adult Learners. This video will examine what research tells us about the cognitive development of adults and will look at some theories of adult development that affect learning. Developmental theory involves not only our psychological characteristics, but also our social and cultural background. We don't develop in isolation, and the traditional nature-nurture debate in psychology suggests that both genetic and environment play roles in the developmental path that we take. Here are the guiding questions for this video. What are the three major continuum in developmental psychology? Describe Piaget's cognitive developmental stage model and its foundation for working with adults. And how is Piaget's model limited for adult learning? Describe Kohlberg's moral developmental stage model and Erickson's and Levinson's social developmental stages. What models exist to examine the role of gender in cognitive development? And what effect does the digital world have on our development in each of these areas? I hope you are beginning to realize that adult developmental theory is a broad topic with many frameworks and models. This provides us with many implications that can be used to make some assumptions about learning in adulthood. In general, there are three big ideas or continuum that psychologists consider which shape our thinking in human development. The first is nature versus nurture. How does genetic inheritance and experience influence our development? The second is continuity versus stage. Is development a gradual, continuous process, such as an elevator, or does it proceed in a sequence of stages like a ladder? And finally, stability versus change. Do our early personality traits persist through life, or do we change as we age? As we continue through the video, consider how technology and the digital world might impact where we find ourselves on each of these. Some questions to consider might be, has technology become the nurturer for young adults? How has the digital world changed our social environment and thus our development? And does your online personality differ from your day-to-day -day personality? The psychology of human development really has four major perspectives which intertwine. Biological, psychological, sociocultural, and finally an integrated paradigm. From a biological perspective, most adults develop or age along a similar pattern. In middle age, post 40, our physical vigor decreases, however this can depend on individual fitness. Our visual sharpness diminishes, our body's disease-fighting immune system weakens, and our neural processing slows. We tend to have longer reaction times and slower memory recall. And our brain weight decreases so that by age 80, we have about 5% less brain mass. But Remaining socially and physically active can stimulate that brain cell development, enhance our memory and our judgmental processes. Moving on to the psychological development, including cognitive and moral development. By cognition, we're referring to all of the mental activities associated with thinking, knowing, remembering, and communicating. Piaget developed a theory of cognitive development. He was developing questions for kids' intelligence tests and became interested in the similarity of the errors that they made. He believed that a child's mind was not just a miniature model of an adult's mind, whereas most people at the time felt that kids knew less than adults, not that they had different thinking patterns. Piaget identified stages of cognitive development in children. He felt that our intellectual progression is based on our unceasing struggle to make sense of our experience and that children are active thinkers who are constantly trying to make sense of the world. Maturing brains and developing brains build concepts and schemas, and we adjust these by our need to assimilate or accommodate to new surroundings. Piaget's four stages are as follows. The sensory motor stage, from birth to age two, where babies take in the world by touching and grasping and mouthing objects. They live in the present and they lack object permanence. In the pre-operational stage, during the preschool years, up to about age six or seven, they're too young to really perform mental operations and they lack the concept of conservation. Preschool kids are pretty egocentric and they can't perceive things from another's point of view. In the concrete operational stage, up to about age 12, 
children begin to grasp the idea of conservation and fully get the mental ability to do basic mathematical transformations like addition and subtraction. And finally, the formal operational stage up to age 12 onwards, uh, our reasoning expands from concrete into abstract thought and formal operational thinking. While Piaget's theory was controversial, studies do reveal that human cognition does proceed in this kind of sequence across cultures. However, today researchers see that the process is continuous and not in discrete stages. I want you to also consider how children and adults' development has dramatically changed in the age of high accessibility to technology. Rarely will you see a child or a teenager without a cell phone or an iPad or an iPod or some other digital device. Imagine how this type of access to instant information has changed their mental processes or in some cases distracted them from actually thinking at all. Piaget contended that kids construct understandings and that they're not passive vehicles. A teenager's developing ability to reason gives them a new level of social awareness and moral judgment. And for early teens and young adults, their reasoning is self-focused, thinking that their private experiences are unique, assuming parents can't understand, and thus focusing on peers for advice and support. Imagine when their Facebook network is massive, the conflicting advice that they receive. Let's move on to Kohlberg and moral development. He stated that a crucial task of childhood and adolescence is discerning right from wrong and developing character, and he referred to three basic levels of moral thinking. Pre-conventional morality, before age nine, where it's a morality of self-interest and children obey to either avoid punishment or get a reward. Conventional morality, usually morality involves to care for others and upholding the laws and post-conventional morality where people have agreed upon rights and we perceive them as ethical. The third major perspective is socio-cultural which involves both social and gender ideas. Thinking of adult development from this perspective we need to consider how factors such as gender, age, race, socioeconomic status, sexual orientation and ethnicity affect our learning and development. This approach acknowledges how the social world influences our development. Think to yourself how your own life might be different if you had been born a different gender or race. These notions are socially constructed, so what you learn about yourself cannot be removed from the social roles you take on. In addition, the life transitions and position we find ourselves in affects how society defines us. For example, the timing of your identity changes when you get married or have children because this puts you in a different light to others in your social world. So learning experiences that connect to where you are, the adult learner, in your own life experience is important to make learning meaningful and authentic. We are never independent of the social and historical forces that surround us. We are caught at a particular point in the web of reality. Erickson and Levinson also attempted to define stages of adult development where some common themes occur. This results in the development of our identity, a comfortable and consistent sense of who we are. Erickson suggested eight social developmental stages that humans go through, and each stage has its own psychosocial task to resolve. In infancy to age one, this is trust versus mistrust. Toddlerhood up to about age two, it is autonomy versus doubt. The preschooler, initiative versus guilt. And in elementary school, competence versus inferiority. The four stages that relate to adult learning begin with adolescence to early 20s where the struggle is identity versus role confusion, the young adult up to the early 40s where the struggle is isolation versus intimacy, middle adulthood where it's stagnation or generativity, and late adulthood where the struggle is integrity versus despair. Levinson also studied both men and women and suggested that people evolve through an orderly sequence of similar stable transitional states. Early life up to age 22, entry into life structure between 22 and 28, the big transition through age 30, and then the culmination of your life structure around age, up to age 40. Thinking back to all the theorists that you have heard about in this video, you might notice that what they have in common is that they're all male. We haven't taken a look at gender and development, and we will do so in a complete module later in the course. But it's important to take a look at the work of Carol Gilligan from Harvard, 
who wrote the text in a different voice. She argued that women and girls go through very different stages in development than the ones that Piaget, Erickson, or Levinson might have suggested. Women tend to be concerned with making connections to others. They're more interdependent and there do exist gender differences which affect the moral development differently in boys and girls. She talked about women needing the three C's of caring, connectedness, and community. Some questions to consider here might be, does gender affect the development? Has technology caused our gender lines to blur? And in 2012, where we can create online personalities of any gender, where we live in the world of avatars, how do we learn our gender roles? The last perspective is the integrated paradigm, and it's important to consider that adult development is affected by a wide variety of factors we've talked about today. How we develop is a result of the interaction of these, and I want you to consider that on top of all of these variables already discussed, we now have another powerful influence, the role of technology in our development as humans. So perhaps a new model of adult development needs to be suggested. We work and live in a world where we cannot escape the influences of technology, and in this week's tutorial we will discuss how the digital world has shaped and continues to shape who we are as human beings. Synthesis questions for this video. Brainstorm ways that technology affects our development cognitively. Does the speed of information transmission and accessibility aid our development? What features of the digital world help or do not help our socio-cultural development? Has the digital world affected our moral development? Has the digital world affected how we define our gender roles? And does increased exposure to media images through technology change our gender expectations? And finally, have the affordances of technology allowed for more progressive adult development? Or do you believe we go through the same stages chronologically independent of our digital world? I look forward to chatting with you in tutorial.